There's no doubt that ChatGPT is incredibly powerful for research. The problem is at the moment is the GPT-4 model is not available to many people outside of OpenAI's interface. So how can we actually utilize ChatGPT, uh, the, the GPT-4 version, more effectively as researchers? Well, I found the tools and the first one is ChatGPT Prompt Splitter. So one thing that sort of has come up with um, ChatGPT is that you can only enter so much information before it says, sorry, like you've entered too much information, split it up and try again. Well, these tools allow you to enter large amounts of text to ask questions on a little bit later. So let's see how they work. There's two that I wanna look at. The first one is ChatGPT Prompt Splitter, and the other one does exactly the same thing, but it's called ChatGPT Splitter. So let's have a look at my uh, thesis. My thesis here has got loads of text, and you know, I typically wouldn't be able to use something like this in ChatGPT4 without getting that error message. So here, I'm just gonna go copy that, and I'm gonna put it into the prompt splitter, and then I'm gonna say split into 15 parts. And what you get are these 15 parts that you can place into chat GPT. So copy that one to clipboard, and then we can head over here, and we can make sure that it goes in. There we are. So part one, 15 received, awaiting the next part. And you go through that over and over again until everything has been put in. It's got a great sort of simple interface, really recommended if you're finding yourself, you're always reaching that character limit. Okay, the next one is Chat GPT Splitter. So here I'm gonna upload my entire thesis. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste my text in there if it allows it. All of that information is in. We want a 15,000 uh, chunk size and let's process. And obviously it's gonna take a while because there is a lot of information, but you can see it split up my entire document into 29 chunks. And all I do is go here, click copy and then send that one. We'll refresh this, um, make sure on chief GPT-4 and then we're gonna copy that in and it's gonna say, Okay, chunk one of 29, and then it's gonna wait for the next chunk so you put them in. Super useful and uh, a great way for working with documents that are larger than uh, is typically allowed with ChatGPT. The only downside with this one is that you can hit that 25 messages per three hours limit when you're copying in a load of data. So just bear that in mind. Are you struggling to find the perfect prompt? You've probably heard about prompt engineering. That's about asking the right question in the right way to get the right result. Here, they've done all of the hard work for you. There's a couple of places. The first one is this, Flow GPT. It's got a load of free uh, prompts that you can put in to chat GPT. Let's have a look to see what it's got for research. So here you can see that it's got a load of free options for research, research paper summary, research field explained. And if you click on these, you will see the actual prompt. I want you to act as a research field counselor. I'm interested in a specific research field, blah, blah, blah. You take that, you copy it across to chat GPT and it will help you sort of like create your own prompts. One thing that I really like doing is using these as scaffolds for my own prompts, but having a good idea of what works right now is awesome. There are free options like Flow GPT, but there's also prompt marketplaces if you wanna spend a bit of money. Now I've not tried any of these, but if we go to GPT and we look for uh, research, you can see that you've got a lot of science related ones. So you've got research proposal, you've got scientific uh, research writing, you've got research proposal writer, $2.99. Now, if you've got a little bit of money, it may be worth investing, you know, $10 in a few of these to go around. You've got this one, you know, summarize a research paper. So it may be worth you having a look at these, but if you haven't got much money, the best one I've seen at the moment for research is Flow GPT. There's other problems marketplaces and aggregators out there, but these are the best populated for science and research at the moment. Um, and if you've got a bit of money, Prompt Marketplace uh, in the promptbase.com is where the best uh, value is at the moment for researchers. But I'm sure there's a lot of people hot on their tail and I'll be sure to keep you updated. So once you've got your favorite prompts, you may find that you're using them over and over again. So instead of 
continuously typing them in or having a copy and paste from other places, I found this tool that only has 40 users, but I think it's gonna be very, very powerful for academic and research purposes. It's simply called Prompster, and all it does is bring slash commands to chat GPT. So let's have a look. We'll go over here, we'll load up a new thing, and all we have to do, and you can see I've uploaded it up here, so this is the, um, the shortcut. But all I have to do is write slash and then start typing. So academic. So there we are, academician. <laughs> I don't know, Academ academician. I don't know how you say that. But there we are, act as an academic. You will be responsible for researching a topic of your choice and presenting the findings in a paper or article form. So there's one. Now, that is the only one there really suitable for PhD and research purposes, but I want to show you this because I think this is where the true power of this um, extension for a browser comes in. All you have to do, click up here and add your own prompts. But let's have a look. We probably don't want all of that. So let's just write article sum. Uh, article sum. And then we're gonna go back to here and we're gonna get uh, an article summarizer from Flow GPT. So research paper summary. I want you to act as a re research paper summarizer. Let's take that. And let's put that one into our prompt maker sum. And we're gonna create our own prompt. I've done this with a couple of other ones, but look, if we type slash and then article, there's article sum, navigate to it, push enter, and you can see that it puts it all in there for you. Mwah! You don't have to do all of that typing. And then you're gonna go on and uh, use this prompt. Another thing that I've done is quite often I say, read this and say read when done. So I've also put in read. So read this and say read when done. And then I just simply copy and paste the text that I want it to read. And then I can use that, it's already in the chat. So that is a great way of using a tool and a uh, browser extension for getting the kind of productivity up with ChatGPT, it takes out all of the grunt work and all of the boring stuff typing in. If you find yourself doing stuff over and over again, look at Prompster. So there we are, there's everything I think you need to know about the tools that are available to make ChatGPT work more efficiently for researchers. Let me know in the comments which ones you would add. Also, go try them out and let me know what you think. This is about you informing me as much as the other way around. So I'd love to see your experiments with these tools. Also, remember there are more ways that you can engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I've used, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free, so go sign up now. And also head over to academiainsider.com. That's where I've got my uh, downloadable resources. I've got my two eBooks, as well as my PhD and grad school application resource pack. Go check it out. I've got a blog there as well. The community's going, and it's all there to help you make PhD and academia work for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.